Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you're keeping safe. I hope you're keeping well. We're going to carry on looking through the book of Daniel this morning, and we're going to look at chapter four. Now, in chapter four, the style of writing changes slightly once again, and we actually see a story from the perspective of King Nebuchadnezzar. And we're going to pick up the narrative in verse 28. All this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as the king was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? So what's going on here? What do we understand is happening in, in this story? It starts off by saying all this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Well, to understand what all this means, we have to understand the first 27 verses. Now, King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream once again. He dreams of a mighty tree. Now, this mighty tree represented King Nebuchadnezzar with his power and his empire and all the wealth and things that he had achieved in his life. But we see that the tree is chopped down. It's chopped down, leaving only the stump, which shows that there's going to be a humbling of the king. However, the stump is left, and we see the reason for this in verse 26. The command to leave the stump of the tree with its roots means that your kingdom will be restored to you when you acknowledge that heaven rules. So we see King Nebuchadnezzar as a proud, proud man, a man who loves himself, loves everything that he's achieved, and he doesn't honour God at all in the way that he lives his life. We mustn't underestimate who King Nebuchadnezzar was from an earthly perspective. He was probably the most powerful man on earth at the time, one of the richest men. He had everything he could ever desire. He was the modern Donald Trump of the modern world, I suppose. He had everything, power, wealth, etc. But, and here's the problem, if we look in verse 30, he said, is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence? by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty. Everything that King Nebuchadnezzar has in his life, he is taking the glory for. He is saying, it's mine. I did this. I built this. And God can't stand that. He absolutely can't stand it. It's pride, isn't it? When we take the glory for things that God deserves the glory for. And in this story, we see the definition of what sin is. And sin is when we put created things above the creator. When our priority lists, we have God in number two or number three, and we have earthly things above him. Now, for you and me, it could be our wealth. It could be our achievements, the things that we want to get done in life. It could be our careers that we want that promotion, that pay rise. It could be in our relationships. And these are not necessarily bad things at all. These aren't. These are good things if they're dealt with properly. It really is a matter of the heart. So I want to tell a couple of stories here. When I was at university, I decided to stay on and do a PhD, a research degree. And when I look back at my motivation for doing it now, it really was all wrong. I wanted the title. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to, you know, enhance career prospects so I could make more money in the future. Well, that clearly didn't work out being a teacher in the end, did it? But at the time, my motivation was, right, I want to get a title, I want to get published in journals, I want to make more money. And it wasn't the right motivation for doing it. It should have been, when I look back, it should have been, I want to find out more about God's creation by studying it through the science. I want, I want to understand God better. I want to give him the glory that he deserves. But no, it was all about me, me, me. What can I achieve? How much more can I get out of life as a consequence of this? Imagine two people at a party. One person is quite an athletic, good-looking chap, and he's bragging to all his friends about how, how good-looking he is, how he can get all the girls that he wants, how he's got plenty of money in the bank account. And that's pride, isn't it? That's obviously pride. And you might be sat here saying, well, I don't have money. I don't have, I don't have wealth. I don't have a good career. I don't have pride. I've got nothing to be proud in. And yet you'd look at the people with pride and go, and with all those things and say, I want that. I really want that. And, and that's pride as well. 
when we when we when we look at things and desire things that aren't God. You don't have to be that person who's got everything to be proud. You can be the person that's got nothing that wants all those things for the wrong reasons. And that's pride as well. So why do we want that promotion? Why do we want that pay rise? Why do we want that qualification? Is it for self or is it for the glory of God? I don't think that money, that wealth, that relationships, all these things, achievements, careers, etc. are bad things. Because what we see when King Nebuchadnezzar is restored at the end of the story is that they give God gives him back all of these things. I don't think they're bad things, but for King Nebuchadnezzar, he had put God here, well, probably more like here, 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 right down off the screen. And he put his wealth up here. He'd put his achievements up here. So what can we boast in? Let's look in Galatians chapter 5, verse 14. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. That's what we can boast in. Jesus Christ and his death on the cross that brought salvation for sinners. And that's what we need to boast in. So let's have a look at what happened to King Nebuchadnezzar in the rest of our text after his prideful statement in verse 30. The words were still on his lips when a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you, King Nebuchadnezzar. Your royal authority has been taken away from you. You will be driven away from people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like cattle. Seven times will pass for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdoms of men and gives them to anyone he wishes. Immediately, what had been said about Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled. He was driven away from people and ate grass like cattle. His body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair grew like the feathers of an eagle and his nails like the claws of a bird. So King Nebuchadnezzar fell. He was here and God took him right down to the lowest of the lows, to the valley of humiliation. We mustn't forget who King Nebuchadnezzar was, this rich, powerful man who everyone knew, respected, feared. And God took him to the lowest of the lows. He was eating grass like the cattle and he had the mind of an animal. What a fool. And sometimes we need to be at our lowest. We need to be on our knees at our weakest to see who God is. And in this, we discover who we are and who God is. We get perspective, don't we? King Nebuchadnezzar had to go from here all the way down into this valley of humiliation. And maybe that's what it takes for us to see our pride for what it is. But let's see the remedy to pride in verse 34. Let's see how the story ends. Uh, but at the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honoured and glorified him who lives forever. At the same time, my sanity was restored. My honour and splendour were returned to me for the glory of my kingdom. My advisers and nobles sought me out and I was restored to my throne and became even greater than before. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the King of heaven because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. So this is the remedy to pride and it's found in verse 34. King Nebuchadnezzar was on his knees. He was, he was flat at the lowest point he'll have ever been. And at the end of that time, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven. He looked up. He saw who he was and he saw who God is. And he gave praise to God. He gave praise, he gave honour and glory to God. Not to man, not to himself anymore, but to God. What a dramatic turnaround. From a man who was taking glory for everything to a man who was now giving glory to God. So if King Nebuchadnezzar was here before, he went down to here in the humiliation, but then God's brought him back up to here. What a turnaround. 
And he's infinitely better off than he was before this all happened because he now praises and glorifies the most high God. He has a perspective of who he is and who God is. And we need that perspective as well. If we're going to battle pride in our lives, we need to see who we are, who God is. And we need to put God top on our priority lists, on our priority list. We can't put ourselves, our pride, our needs, our wants above God. King Nebuchadnezzar was humbled. He was humbled to the lowest point, but God restored him and he gave him a fear of God, a love of God. And I pray that this will be true for us. Shall we close in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're glorious, that you're better than anything we can fill our lives with. So I pray that the, the sin of pride would be revealed to us where it exists in our lives and that we would repent from it and we would put you first in our lives and that we would love you for who you are and what you've done that you bought our salvation on the cross of calvary and we praise you for that and i pray that we would turn our back on our sin of pride and turn to you in jesus name amen